Alright, we are back and we're in Unreal Engine now. I went ahead and opened the project because Unreal is kind of annoying when you're opening it, it takes a while. But where I've done this, in I use my dummy A workspace, you go to your local workspace, wherever that is, with the Unreal Editor opening, you browse in, and for our project it should be under UE4, Breathless, and you have this U project file. That's what Unreal needs to open. So I've gone ahead and done that, and this is what it opens up as. Uh, right now we're using the VR template for where it starts, but as we make our own levels and everything, it should open up in the last place that people were at. So the first thing you need to do before you touch anything in Unreal is connect to source control. So you go up to the source control button right next to the save, and you choose connect to source control. So we got this window popping up. Provider is going to be Subversion. Perforce and Git are the other options, but we have a Subversion server set up, so you choose Subversion. Right here, this is where you add in the repository URL, which is going to be file, three slashes. For the actual project will be the U drive, DA490, uh, Let's see if I can find that. Here we go. This location. And you will have to add this in every time you open Unreal. So save this somewhere handy. Like right outside your workspace would be a good idea. Just be able to get to this place. I will try and put it up on the marker board in the lab where most people are going to have to be doing this. But things get erased. So yeah, don't save whatever change. Now, right here, in the earlier video, I mentioned that it showed Bob made a bunch of changes. Uh, the SVN username, if we had a proper server software set up, you would have a username and password that's assigned to you that you'd log in with. Since we don't have that, you can enter anything. But for the sake of us understanding what's happening, please use your name or your first initial, last name, or first name, last initial, something like that. And you need to be consistent. Whatever you decide to use, you need to keep using it. That checkout process is going to happen in Unreal. And this is how you say who's doing the checking out and who's checking things back in. So I went with Bob for an example in the video I had to delete. So I'll do something actually realistic here. Password and labels should be left blank, since we don't have a password manager, and accept settings. Now down at the bottom, we have connection was successful, and this little icon here is green with two arrows in it. I'm connected to source control. Now in the menu, change source control settings will open that dialog up, so I can change login, or if I want to basically exit out of source control, choose this run without source control but still need to be there and it'll reconnect every time. Now you have this submit to source control. This is just like for the Windows version. Oh, if I go into a repository, SVN commit. This is the equivalent of that inside Unreal Engine. So whenever you're done editing a file, you submit it. So let's go into a folder here in content. Uh, blueprints are pretty easy to add. There's nothing in here right now because this doesn't have content. So let's add something new. A uh, blueprint class. And just actor. So we have a test blueprint. And if I open this up, it should pop up the blueprint editor. So we have something in here. And if I go to the event graph, now let's do some changes here. Uh, key press F. Press the F key, what happens? All the examples I've done with blueprints, I've actually been doing something. So I guess we'll just leave the F event in there. Compile the blueprint, save it. So now, since I saved this, we have this little icon changed here. Originally it was just a star, 
saying it was a new unsaved blueprint, just like Unreal Engine usually does. Now we have this red plus sign. So this says that I've added something new. It needs to go onto the server. So if I right click on it, under the source control menu, check in, or I go up to source control, submit to source control. You know, I'll use this menu. So this is where we need to enter a description. Notice Unreal is a little more of a stickler for the rules. To keep things from going bad, we need to follow these rules, but Unreal is actually making sure you do it. So, some type of message in here. Now, it should show the username I entered when I did source control up here, but just in case it doesn't, I'm still going to add in the name and a bit of space. And my actual message. Created a test blueprint. Check the file and press OK. So this has been submitted and it shows my revision number over here. Now, the workflow is a little different on Unreal now. If I try to open something that's in the server, like this blueprint is now, I need to right click on it, source control, and check out. What this does is it checks it out to me so no one else will edit that file. If someone else tries to, and I don't have a second copy of Unreal working at home, but if someone else opens it and tries to check it out, it'll show that it's already been checked out. So since I checked it out, the option is showing to check it back in. If someone else tries to check it out, since I already have it, it'll show checked out by and then a username. So now it's checked out to me. I can do my changes. Uh, add another key press. Uh, H. So now you have the little star here that's unsaved. So I can check it back in. So since I didn't save it yet, it's asking me do I want to save it. This is saving in my local copy. So save. Now trying to check it back into the server. and press OK. Submitted version 12. Now I checked it back in, I don't have it. Now if you're still working on something but you want people to have a working version of it, check that back out. When I do the check in, I can select this option, keep files checked out. This isn't going to check it back in, it's just going to upload the changes I've made to the server and then I'll still have it checked out so no one else can edit but they can read what I've done so like in a scene we have these actors in here uh, this generic head controller if I'm editing this generic HMD asset then I can do some edits I can check it in without actually checking it in and everyone else will be able to see the updates that I've made but I'll still have it checked out so I can keep working and no one else will be able to steal the asset from me basically. So when you're done, save all. So what's being saved here? The map. Now if this is an important thing, levels or maps in Unreal are assets. So if I actually go into the content browser, I think this is virtual reality, no, blueprint. Maps. So here's the actual level file. The startup map, I believe it is. So anytime I do work in this scene, I'm actually editing the map. So let's just move this guy over. I've changed the level. Shows a little star here. So when I try to save, since I haven't checked this out, I've already made changes to it. It's given me some options here. I can check it out if no one else has to save my changes to it or I can make writable. Make writable will let me save changes to my local workspace but it will not sync them with the server. So this is where a little bit of coordination comes in. In reality a level designer will be placing the objects in the level. No one else should be messing with that. So I'm just gonna check it out because I want to save those changes. There's a map file. 
check out. So I've saved the changes and the files are checked out to me. So I'm going to go to source control, check in. So I check in the level file, and since I right clicked on the actual map file, this built data, the registry file that goes with it, has not actually been checked in. So let me check this level back out. Now if you go up to source control and submit to source control, here's a list of all the files that have been changed. So this will check in all your files that you have checked out. checking out, checking in all files. So now everything's gone to the server, everything is saved, so what I can do now is I can exit Unreal. But, let's see, yeah, exit Unreal and the annoying launcher behind it. So now I was working in workspace A, so I didn't open this Unreal project was not opened. This one over here in Workspace A was opened. So what's happened, if I were to actually go into Workspace B and update, we'll see we have some new files in there and some updates to files. Now the U asset and UMAP, all the Unreal files, these are binary files you cannot open them in a text editor or anything else. You have to go into Unreal. So it won't really show that much when I'm in Windows Explorer because I can't really do the editing here. But it will still show the usual icon overlays for if something is outdated or anything like that. It's just that you're not going to be working in Windows Explorer while you're doing Unreal. And that, should solve, that should cover most of what we're going to have to do. So if there are any other questions, there is the instruction sheet posted to the Google Drive. Uh, if I'm in the lab, feel free to ask me or post it in the chat. I will also be posting the full PDF guide, and I didn't put this in the last video. If you right-click in your workspace, the tortoise, this help, this is actually their guide. I have a PDF copy of everything, since if you don't want to go browsing. but. You can just search a term, like uh, lock, and it'll show. This is their user manual. This is everything they publish on how to do everything. A lot of the stuff we're not going to use, like we're not doing branches or anything like that. So a lot of this menu, like patches, branches, we're not dealing with. That's just too complex, and we don't need it. The only things we're really using are the locks, adds, deletes, and renames and then the update and commit. So I believe that actually covers everything. Any questions, feel free to ask, but until then.